Welcome to the Condé Nast Traveler Dine and Drink Festival, a special event where we're chatting with the best in the business about all things food. I'm Dia Kohli, Features Director at Condé Nast Traveler India. The last few years have changed the where, how and what of dining and drinking for all of us. While people at home have reverted to comfort good cooking and their grandmother's karas, the F&B industry has gone through massive upheaval and with that upheaval has come change. Eating locally sustainably and returning to our regional roots for inspiration has taken many chefs around the country down unexplored paths. And our guest today is one of the pioneers in this field. His presentation of Indian food as a fine dining experience has helped change its perception for a global audience. He has showcased regional flavors, recipes, and created a new identity for Indian food beyond chicken tikka masala. I am very pleased to welcome Manish Mehrotra, corporate chef, Old World Hospitality Group, and Indian Accent Restaurants to Condé Nast Travelers Dine and Drink Festival. Manish, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for calling. It's wonderful. And I would like to start with the question which has sort of been at the top of my mind. What has been your go-to comfort food during this period? <laughs> go-to comfort food actually this uh, uh, lockdown I actually cooked at home. Usually I I don't get time and I don't feel like cooking at home because we are so uh, much in the kitchen in the hotel so you really don't want to look at the home kitchen so in this lockdown i actually cooked in my house um some some day in day out uh, from breakfast to dinner also some some days so yeah it was fun it was going back to the home kitchen and learning a professional chef it is very difficult to work at home kitchen it is uh, you have to chop onion you cannot ask for chop onions um you have to um the and the most difficult part of the kitchen is that you have to clean it after cooking so so that is a bit a uh, thing what what all things and these things make me really realize that how important uh, a smallest job in kitchen uh, is and uh, how much uh, sometimes we take uh, as other people for granted in our professional kitchen ki ye to backhand kaam chalta rehta hai but you actually do in in yourself in your home kitchen it is it is a tough job and it is very important job and the second thing is managing home kitchen is 10 times more difficult than managing a professional kitchen why so do you say that see in the in the restaurant guests are changing every day at home you have a captive audience you have to cook different meals for different people i don't change my menu every day but at home the lady has to change her menu every day it's a difficult thing so managing home kitchen is more difficult than the professional kitchen i would say what is the one dish that you went back to and probably cooked the most during this period i i i think uh, khichdi is in different ways uh, and a mutton curry with rice that's the like again a non vegetarian comfort food and a khichdi in a different ways are a uh, very vegetarian comfort food for me so obviously one of the things is after the lockdown and when things opened up again it was a return to the professional kitchen but things had changed in this period so what was it like this return what changed irreversibly what changed for the better i i i will take it what changed for the better first thing what i told you that each and every individual is so important in kitchen definitely you always give respect to everyone but this uh, this uh, hardship really make you realize that every single component every single individual in the kitchen whatever job he does is very very important second how you are going to manage your manpower and their potential how to tap that potential in a proper and in a 100% way that is the most important thing in that you can manage your manpower you can manage your cost because after pandemic everybody was not struggling to make profit 
everybody was struggling how to control the cost because um, um, cost is one such thing which can only increase your profit at this point of time when business is such challenged um, there are no international travel going on so you can control your cost without compromising the quality that was the biggest challenge and i think that happened for good um, then the hygiene practices what we started we used to follow all these practices before pandemic also but certain ones like wearing mask in the kitchen and all these things um, i think it happened for good and i think it should be continued and um, sanitizing the the restaurant front of the house all these things should continue forever it's it's a very good habit and i think we should continue and the second part is the people who are coming to your restaurant the guest now they are more aware of the back end of the restaurant also they are more concerned about the back end of the restaurant so there has to be a complete trans uh, i would say complete uh, transparency between front of the house and back of the house that uh, they should be equally comfortable about back of the house also the way you are comfortable about front of the house so definitely after a successful chef tasting menu we invite our guests why don't you come in the kitchen take a look where we cook meet the people who cook your food and and it it is it is wonderful experience for them also and our staff also team also feels very happy about it so you obviously have taken indian food to a global audience and completely changed the way people thought about indian food um how did it work was there any sort of like resistance at any point when people went looking for indian food in a new york or a london and they were surprised by what you presented yes yes it it not only new york and london it it happened when we started indian accent in delhi because i think we were the first indian restaurant in delhi or maybe in india which was not serving butter chicken so so the first thing people used to walk out of the restaurant that uh, what kind of indian restaurant is this you don't have kebab you don't have biryani you don't have butter chicken and all these things um but slowly slowly now people understood like what uh, we are trying to do and uh, same thing happened with uh, us in in new york people were really surprised when they saw the food they said we never expected indian food to be done in this way also uh, or or your tasting menu we really enjoyed with the wine pairings or or uh, after eating your food we don't feel that we are overwhelmed or or by entering in your restaurant i don't feel like i'm entering into rajasthan goa or kerala uh, or when i enter in your restaurant i don't get that pickle or the spice smell in 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 my in my nose so they re- they really felt surprised about uh, uh, the decor the food the type of service the type of bar program which was we, we were running um it was not just the restaurant with lots of beer and all these things it was professional cocktails uh, some exceptional wine pairings some exceptional whiskey pairings so people were really surprised and and we were quite happy about it and there are some people who are came to indian accent looking for chicken tikka masala so they were a bit disappointed but uh, most of the people were quite happy about it right that actually brings me to the question of your decor in both your restaurants i mean it was always very muted and understated and elegant without the obvious indian motifs of you know like indian statues or dancing girls or like you know like very indian music playing so how do you balance that because people again once again people go in expecting a very indian and by indian i mean like a very north indian sort of aesthetic how do you avoid the cliches essentially in decor see we 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 always wanted to showcase our food we always wanted our food and the experience should be the highlight of the restaurant and you should not feel that um, entering an indian restaurant with a large ganesha statue or uh, beaches of goa or kerala or bindis or churis from rajasthan and all these things this was the clear indian indian thing so we didn't want anything of that and when we were planning the kitchen 
we told our kitchen consultant that exhaust system and the AC system should be such that not a single smell of kitchen should be there in the restaurant. And there were no pickles and all these things in the restaurant. So you don't smell any spices or, or pickles and all these things. There were no display of spices on the front of the restaurant, which usually um, Western Indian restaurant in West have that kind of a thing. So, so people should focus and be surprised by our food. That was, uh, and the experience, that was the most important thing for us. And that is what we followed. And in the decor, we in London also, in New York also, in Delhi also, we took a lot of contemporary Indian artists. Which, um, which they were doing a fantastic, um, in London we had a beautiful pitch, uh, artwork created by a Kashmiri artist, which is um, uh, the sides of the matchbox, um, which, is, which is quite unique. It's a big, almost six foot by six foot artwork. Um, and it was fantastic. In, in Delhi, we have uh, Amit Pasricha's beautiful photographs of uh, monuments of Delhi clicked in a different way. So we wanted to showcase India in a modern way, the way we do it in our food and in the decor also. You are a culinary ambassador for India in a sense, but how do you translate Indian food? Because that itself is a mind boggling array of cuisines from across the country, different flavors, which often have nothing to do with each other. So how do you translate Indian food in that sense for a global audience? Um, the first basic rule of any dish at Indian accent is at heart, it should be Indian. It should be hardcore desi, but with a unique combination and presentation and in a serving style that surprise you. But when you put it in your mouth, it's a hardcore Indian dish you feel that you are eating something which your grandmother cooked or uh, uh, something which you have experienced in the childhood when you were in India. So that was the whole idea of uh, creating dishes and taking dishes from different parts of India. We try to represent India in a different, different um, menus, but tasting menu, we do it in such a way that we take our tasting menu from street, then a journey to in, in, in different India. So different tasting menus are uh, influenced by different region. My last tasting menu was diff influenced by South India. This one, which is presently going on, is very much influenced by Western part of India. So we have curries from Malwan. We have dal pakwan from uh, Gujarat and Maharashtra. We have uh, mutias and theplas from Gujarat. So a lot of Western influences on this particular menu. Right. So you have also taken, you know, India from the streets, from the home kitchens to the world. What have you brought back from the global sort of kitchens and your travels back to India? So from my global travel, I would say a lot of inspiration in terms of unique combination. A blue cheese naan, which is one of our signature from last almost 11 and a half years of Indian accent. That was one of the first thing uh, we did at Indian accent. And that is the inspiration from blue cheese and bread combination from, from uh, Western uh, part of the world, because blue cheese is a very, very acquired taste. And for Indian palate, it's not very suitable for if, if for, a, for an amateur Indian palate, it, it really challenges you. So, but uh, when it goes hot with the hot naan, with a little hint of pungency of blue cheese, it, it goes very well. It tones out the blue cheese, but again, it gives a bit of a hit also and a hot naan, it really comforts you also. So the unique combination, unique ingredients, um, that is incorporated in my menu from my international travels. Right. What has always been part of your pantry staples, no matter where you've had a kitchen? There are a few things which are always there on, on, on my, on my, in my pantry. One is something coconut. Coconut is my favorite ingredient and um, I think it's one of the most versatile ingredient from starter to main course to dessert. You can do everything with coconut and serve it on the coconut, uh, in the coconut. So coconut is very, very versatile for me. 
um, then uh, parmesan cheese is very important garlic is very important oyster sauce is very important so these four five things i always try to and the chaat masala these four five right. things i always keep in my pantry also tell me something about it you have been a pioneer of course but there have been many people who have tried to well follow a similar kind of route and uh, well it's called fusion so in that sense and sometimes it works and sometimes it ends up a bit uh, well less than savory so how does one define what is good fusion and what is bad fusion see there is a very thin line between between this uh, and uh, you have to follow certain rules um whenever i i do a unique combination which people call it fusion um see 10 years back fusion was a bad word now fusion is not a bad word everybody is doing in all different fields whether it's music whether it's art whether it's painting whether it's food everybody is doing it so it's not a bad word anymore but i would say it's it's a unique combination what you do first thing you yourself has to be convinced by that combination that it it works second thing is whatever you are um infusing whatever you are combining it should make sense there has to be a reason behind it there has to be a story behind it and that show story or or reason the person who's eating it should be convinced about it then your dish is successful it it suddenly you can't take two vague things and put it in one and call it a modern indian it doesn't work like that and i follow certain rules in my in my kitchen that um the most simple one is i don't take two different cuisines of india in one dish so you will you will never find um, uh put with a kashmiri korma uh so so it 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 will never be like that so there has to be some and you you start a dish you follow a circle and every time you have to close that circle it should be unique combination it should make sense there has to be a story behind it there should be all different elements texture flavor color presentation in that dish so you close the circle for all the dishes and that is how it works there's also that other part of it which is very lovely about your food where you are playful without ever being gimmicky so using fun things like phantom cigarettes as a playful touch in a dish rather than just as a as an extraneous thing tell us the story behind things like that how to be playful see i i really miss my childhood and i am of a generation which started from binaka geet mala to iphone 13 pro so we are of that generation we have seen everything and our generation the world really moved really fast especially after 1996 1997 the world after 2000 world really moved fast and sometimes in this fast moving uh, thing a lot of childhood nostalgia is gone away because we have grown up with this phantom cigarette or or a small pressure cooker and all these things there are a lot of things which we have grown up with which now we don't see it is lost in so 2019 2011 12 i started doing bit of this nostalgia thing with a phantom sweet cigarette or a, or a flavored candy floss or a, um, this uh, pressure cooker or a char pai and all these things with a fatafat goli or a am papad and all these things uh, which was just to create that nostalgia back because people were forgetting all these things and the new generation didn't have any idea that uh, when we were kids we used to smoke cigarettes also well, it was a fake once but still we used to do that um and so so i wanted to revive that and i did few things which uh, were very very unique and interesting for us also um but suddenly this thing started that everybody started using all sorts of things in all sorts of dishes then i also toned down a little bit uh so i do playful things um like the you know, monopoly notes in my dollar ki chaat or a kul kulfi in so yes we do just to bring back those nostalgia i don't think so anybody plays monopoly anymore <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah i doubt very much 
But tell me something. So when you started Indian accent in London and New York, what was it like then? This landscape for Indian food abroad, and what has changed since then? What is it like now? See now, see all of us, whether it be Gagan, uh, Pratik, Himanshu, um, Atul Kocher, Vinod Bharti, all of us, all of us, we have been working hard to change the perception of Indian food. What the perception a Westerner have about Indian food in his mind. Uh, that it's a chicken tikka or a curry or a naan kind of a cuisine. It's heavy. You eat it on a weekend with beer and all these things. You can't pair it with wines. It is spicy. It's a lot of chilies and all. So we, all of us, we are really trying hard to break that perception and the mindset. Uh, okay, and make sure that Indian food can be fine dining. There are five thousand. 10,000 years of history behind this food and uh, the proper science behind this food and India is not only about North India, we have West India, we have South India, we have East India where the cuisine is very different from what people know about certain things from India. Um, there are certain things you eat in Indian restaurant in India which you will in abroad which you will never find it in India. Um, so all these things we really wanted to change and I think in last eight, nine years these things have changed and people people have uh, become more aware of uh, different regional cuisines, uh, the real Indian food, um, people know that chicken tikka masala is not Indian anymore, uh, it is a British dish and um, Indian chefs are now uh, very well regarded on, on world platform on different um, events and all these things. So things are changing uh, and I'm really happy about that. Right. And you have done a lot to further that effort. Being in London, you are a person who loves markets. What has inspired you the most about a market in London? And then tell me about the market in New York. So the markets, market is one such thing. It works as you're reading a book for a chef. If he's walking in a in a in a food market or a or a farmer's market, it really works as a book that suddenly you you read something and you get inspired. Suddenly you see some ingredients and you get a dish in your mind. So whether you are in Borough Market or Portable Road or or any farmer's market in Union Square in New York or Okla Mandi or INA Market or or Crawford Market in Bombay, um, you get to see things. And suddenly those things, you start working in your mind. What can I do with this? What can I do with that? Oh, then you travel in the market, you see different vendors doing different unique things. You really get inspired. Um, I, I saw a, a dal pakwan uh, thing in, in one video uh, in some small town in Gujarat and I really got inspired and that dish is now on in an accent menu and a comrade menu in a different ways but it is there on the menu of both the restaurants. So you get inspired when you travel in the market. Only thing is you just have to keep your eyes, ears and nose and the palate open. So that that really market really inspires you. Right. So when you miss home in London, where do you go if it's not your own restaurant? <laughs> London, there are a few places I, I really, really enjoy where I keep going back and back uh, um, for certain things. There's a restaurant called Barshu Marshan in 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 um, in, in, in Soho in Shaftesbury Avenue, where you really go for real, real Hunan and Sichuan food, which is unique. You will not find those dishes anywhere in 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 the world. I would say. Um, then uh, you go to uh, Edgware Road. To there's a particular place there used to be called Beirut Express for for your shawarma and for your pita breads. It was like really, really tasty. Um, so London, there are thousands of places where you really go. And New York, I, I go for this. Uh, there's a Spanish restaurant where your garlic uh, prawns, that uh, uh, garlic oil prawns, Spanish or oh, to die for. You just go there to eat that only. So there are thousands of places where you go and you really crave for some of uh, these things when you when you are there. Right. Also tell me, what is your take on reality TV now? How has that worked to sort of 
uh, encourage people first to cook and second maybe taught an audience about a world of food that exists out there i think it's really really good because reality tv and these type of shows really made chefs superstars and which is very very good uh, because uh, 20 years back or 25 years back becoming a chef was not a great kind of a profession now people people are um, um, okay with it and they want their kids to become chefs and uh, chefs are getting uh, i would say good salaries um, which uh, is very very good so i i i always say like reality tv is very very good and it really helps to spread your ideas your cuisine your food again it's very very good for the cuisine also right also tell me one thing one pet peeve in indian cooking especially in a professional kitchen that definitely like a trend that needs to die see all there there are there are, there are till now whatever i've seen um that uh, trends coming to indian food it is already died down i would say molecular in indian food and all these things but it's already gone it's already gone there is not new trend which is uh, vegan um which is uh, going on and that i would say it's not a fad it is going to stay for some time it is going to stay uh, so i think all of us earlier if you ask me 2 years back vegan i said oh that's terrible but now i have to accept also that yes it is the thing which is going to stay and indian cuisine we have so many things which we can offer as vegan so i think all the chefs we all of us we have to explore more and come up with more innovative menus for the weekend i would say right but tell me something you grew up in a family which was primarily vegetarian right and then you went on to make these absolutely delightful meat based dishes so uh what do you see as this this future of food in that sense where we are looking towards a uh, well meat alternatives and a world which is increasingly more vegetarian how is that reflecting in your own cooking and your menus and your food philosophy perhaps see being brought up in a vegetarian family made me believe that food with less ingredients less paraphernalia can be tasty the simple food can be tasty that is the belief which i got eating in my house because food used to be very tasty without any red garlic also uh, without non vegetarian things also um so simple food is very very good but simple food is 10 times more difficult to cook if you have to use less ingredients if you have to use 100 ingredients it's easy but if you have to cook for with four ingredients it's very very difficult so uh, cooking simple food is difficult so i would say um we have reached in certain way now we are looking back to our roots we are looking at home recipes and i do believe that india is a treasure trove indian household is a treasure trove of a, of a unique dishes which are worthy of being served in a fine dining restaurant we just have to explore we just have to go deep dive deep inside india we don't have to invent anything see we we don't belong to countries where people have to invent dishes because they didn't have the history they didn't have the culture they didn't have uh, that kind of uh, ingredient repertoire in their cuisine to, that they have to go out forging for things we don't have to forge we have hundreds of ingredients available around we don't have to forge for things um we have hundred types of vegetables and all people go and forge in the places where they don't get anything if there it's a severe winter or it's a severe um summer or something which does you don't grow anything then you do that uh, so in india i would say we have to just explore and we will find gems you just have to polish it a little bit and they are worthy when you talk about this polishing what do you mean polishing in the sense see um it is not necessary that oil floats on your curry it is not required it is not required um you can you can make curry with enough oil but you can remove it um there it it there should not be any chilies that much of chilies in the dish that uh, it uh, really kills all the other flavors it has to be a blend of spices not the chilies and and there are certain cuts 
um, of uh, meats or vegetable you you can improve upon to make that dish better you don't have to mash every vegetable and looks like a potato um, the cauliflower should have can have a little bit of texture uh, uh, beans can have a little bit of texture it should not be mishmash of everything so there are thousands it just require a little bit of polishing and it's voila right that's amazing okay so now i'm going to ask you a few questions which you have to answer very very quickly so I, london or new york you have to pick new york new york Why? new york is more cosmopolitan new york is more cosmopolitan new york uh, is uh, from 5 dollars to 5000 dollars you are okay london in central london after 9 o'clock it's difficult to survive on 5 pounds you have to go and eat sandwich only but new york you can you can have a variety and uh, again new york is uh, where you can really hop on uh, in different places and different types of places in in one night uh, london it becomes sometimes difficult right your favorite chef of all time my favorite chef there are not one there are many there are many i would say uh from from ananda solomon to rick stein uh in my older generation from to where i took a minute uh, inspiration from uh the my contemporaries whether it's chef narin thameya of bangalore or uh, or uh, sabi or uh, um, other chefs and the new generation whether it's himanshu or whether it's uh, saurabh or with the pratik sadhu so there are many which i i really admire them if you had to think about the best meal you'd ever eaten and the one oh, that comes back to you that is always i don't know why but that meal really comes back one is what i ate at uh, a restaurant called martias dalgaran in stockholm uh, i don't know i've eaten again after that i have eaten thousands of meal in best of the places in the world but that menu maybe i was in that frame of mind that i had a mushroom tasting menu with a paired with local beers and till now that is one of my best experiences i would say your favorite street food in india chaat <laughs> you 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 can't go wrong with chaat there are different types of seafood uh, street food in india and i love them but no and i think it be chaat nothing can be chaat i could and if you had to pick one chaat which one would that be that's a difficult one i would say a perfectly made alu tikki is is a uh, uh, is is a perfect version of a dish uh, because um any dish i always say like any dish you look for colors textures flavors and all and chaat is one such dish which ticks all the chip boxes i would say different colors different textures different flavors one bite sour one is sweet one is spicy one is salty so it's it's different different things so yeah i'll perfectly done alu chik alu tikki chaat where crispy edges soft center soft dahi sweet chutney spicy green chutney so all these things i would say that sounds delightful <laughs> uh tell me okay so now this is the question for you five things that you can do with the pani puri golgappa puchka whatever you call it which is not the traditional way see pani puri is uh, is i would say one of the interesting and one of the best innovation anybody did in indian food um and and it is so sorry that we really don't know who did this who invented golgappas um that is that is what the documentation of indian cuisine i wish it would have happened and we have paid a tribute to that guy who has created uh, pani puris um it's a first sphere with a liquid center everybody is talking about spherification all these things but this is the first sphere with a liquid center which you put in your mouth in burst so um, so pani puri you can do thousands of things uh, because the moment i'll give you uh, a, an empty shell you can fill it with sky is the limit your sky is the limit cuisine is the limit you can fill it with anything you want it's totally up to individual some people fill it with vodka some people fill it with uh, um um 
something spicy, something sweet. We fill it with wasabi also. Some people do it with smoked salmon. So I think there are thousands of ways you can use it and you can be as innovative as you can. Tell me the one food experiment that went really wrong. Chavad Pras cheesecake. <laughs> See, it was it was again that point of time in 2010 when I was I was doing getting the nostalgia factor back because Chavad Pras was one such thing. Everybody has some kind of a good or a bad memories of it, and to revive that memory, doing a cheesecake lay, layered with a with a thin layer of topped with thin layer of Chavad Pras served with the badam milk. Uh, we put it on a main menu also, but I don't know. <laughs> we used to see people's faces when they used to put it on their mouth. <laughs> <in> their mouth. <laughs> so how long did it stay there? It was there for one few months, but yeah, after that, it was it was just a. It, there are certain things you really have to on the have to have on the menu which really pops your eyes. Like what? So kind of that feeling, I would say. And one last thing, the one dish that you will always be proud of. Again, a lot of things, but I really feel my Dalat Ki Chaat is one thing which I really feel that I try to revive that. And uh, now um, world knows uh, that there is something called aerated milk which, which exists in India 150 years back. Uh, when there were no foams, there were no airs or all these things, espumas and everything in the world. Um, these things were there in India and uh, it was a lost thing, but now it is revived. And um, it's in New York, it's in London. More and more chefs are doing it in a different ways. So yeah, Dalat Ki Chaat is one such thing along with others, which I feel really happy to reviving it, I would say. Not inventing it, but reviving it. Well, thank you, Manish. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And thank I you wish so you much. all the best with your future endeavors. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.